Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our worship service at Chalmers United Church in Kingston, Ontario. We are grateful this morning to the Reverend Dr. Don Meisner for leading us in worship. Don is a graduate of McMaster University and the Andover Newton Theological School in Massachusetts, where he obtained his Doctor of Ministry in 1973. In 1968, Don was ordained to gospel ministry with the Baptist Convention of Ontario. He transferred his ordination credentials to the United Church of Canada in 2002. Over the course of his professional career in Canada and the United States, his ministry has included chaplaincy with the Correctional Services of Canada, being a clinical pastoral and spiritual care educator, as a faculty member at the theolo at theological colleges and for the church and serving as a pastoral minister. Don and his wife Bonnie have collaborated as educators over their careers. They enjoy spending time with their family of three sons and daughters-in-law and nine grandchildren. Don continues to provide pulpit supply, spiritual direction, future direction planning and pastoral consultation. Thank you, Don, for leading us in worship this morning. We also thank Joan and Bill Egnatoff, the members of the hymn choir, and Brigitte Holshu, our sound tech, for their contributions to this service this morning. During the stay-at-home order, our services will be pre-recorded and posted on the Chalmers YouTube channel. Next Sunday, May the 23rd, our guest minister will be the Reverend Phil Hobbs. The May 11th Lunch and Learn meeting had to be postponed and has been rescheduled for this coming Tuesday. 
If you hadn't already registered and would like to attend, please see the Chalmers announcement and news e-blast for details. On May 30th, we will worship with other congregations in the Joint Ecumenical Worship Partnership on Trinity Sunday. If you would like to participate in the mosaic video of the great hymn, Holy, 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 it is being recorded for that service. Please contact me to receive the recording instructions. The deadline for submitting recordings is May the 18th. Also, if you would like to participate in the service by preparing and recording the welcome and call to worship, please contact me. My contact information is found in the Congregational e-blast and in the bulletin. The 11 members of the Chalmers Pastoral Care Team met by Zoom on May the 7th. Please check out what has been happening and what is being planned by looking at the Chalmers News and Announcement e-blast. I draw your attention to the other announcements printed in the bulletin. Since time immemorial, Indigenous peoples have occupied and cared for this land. In acknowledging this land, the traditional home of the Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee, we seek to rebuild right relations with First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples, to learn from them, and to live on this land with respect and gratitude for its bounty. I am lighting this candle to symbolize Christ in our midst. The call to worship today is based on Psalm 46.10. Be still and know that I am God. I find that that's a good way to prepare to be with God. Be still and know that I am God. And eventually we get down to one word, be. Be still. Let us pray. Awaken us in worship to experience you, not so much as one we need to summon, but as one who longs to be present to us, as one who understands our humanness and welcomes our openness. Awaken us in worship to the experience that you are really present. Awaken our longing for security and help us to see that you are a security we can trust in the midst of all the challenges of the pandemic. Assure us that today we do not walk alone. As we risk being still, awaken us to your living presence. Amen. Our first hymn is, I Am the Light of the World, number 87 in Voices United. Thank you. 
sacred mystery greater than words can express, whose love for us and all creation exceeds our capacity to imagine. Open our hearts and minds. Amen. The Gospel reading is from John, chapter 17, verses 6 to 19. Jesus prays for his disciples. I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine, and glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they, will, they are still in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, Protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe. 
by that name you gave me. None has been lost except for the one doomed to destruction, so that scripture would be fulfilled. I am coming to you now, but I say these things while I am still in the world, so that they may have the full measure of my joy with them. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, for they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctify myself, that they too may be fully sanctified. The second reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 1, verses 15 to 26. In those days, Peter stood among the believers a group numbering about 120, and said, Brothers and sisters, the scripture had to be fulfilled in which the Holy Spirit spoke long ago through David concerning Judas, who served as a guide for those who arrested Jesus. He was one of our number and shared in our ministry. With the payment Judas Judas had received for his wick Wit wickedness, he brought a field. There he fell headlong, his body burst open, and all his intestines spilled out. Everyone in Jerusalem heard about this, so they called that field, in their language, a caldena, that is, field of blood. Peter said, It is written in the book of Psalms, May his place be deserted. Let there be no one to dwell in it. And also, may another take his place in leadership. Peter continued, Therefore, it is necessary to choose one of the men who have been with us the whole time the Lord Jesus was living amongst us. Beginning from John's baptism, to the time when Jesus was taken up from us. For one of these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. So they nominated two men, Joseph, called Barsabbas, also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take over this apostolic ministry, which Judas left to go where he belongs. Then they cast lots, and the lot fell to Matthias, so he was added to the eleven apostles. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Our second hymn is, Go Tell It on the Mountain, number 43 in Voices United. Oh, tell it on the mountain 
Next passage that has been read in the United Church lectionary version, uh, the uh, description of Judah's fate is left out. I too am uncomfortable with the description, but it highlights the grim consequences of Judas' intervention. I believe Judas was impatient with Jesus and was attempting in going to the authorities to force Jesus into asserting his kingdom and thereby destroy the oppressive kingdoms of both Rome and the religious community. I see his suicide as his reaction to what his intervention contributed to bringing about. Judas' effort to force Jesus to assert a new kingdom contributed to the full assertion of the destructive power of the kingdoms of the political and religious state. The gospel passage features Jesus' efforts to prepare his disciples for the events to follow when he is arrested, tried, convicted, and executed. What Jesus has done is part of a bigger picture in which God is central. His effort is to motivate the disciples to see themselves in a bigger picture. They are intended to help his followers to prepare for the difficult days ahead. Most of the disciples would end up suffering a similar fate to what Jesus suffered for their stand that Jesus is Lord. At this point, in the story, they're not prepared for what's going to happen. They still see Jesus prevailing over the religious and political forces arrayed against him. These powers are not about to accept Jesus' way of compassion and self-giving because it will mean they have to let go of their illusions of power and control. Neither the Roman or the religious authorities will do this and it will mean Jesus is a threat and must be eliminated. Eventually, the disciples will begin to see why it had to be the way it turned out. But right now, they're clinging to the same illusion that Judas had, that Jesus will prevail and be victorious and establish an even more powerful kingdom in place of the religious and political regimes that are so impressive. In this new kingdom with Jesus in charge, the disciples will be in a position for significant power and control themselves. They can only see what they need to see. And when that fantasy crumbles with Jesus' condemnation and crucifixion, they will be in hiding for fear the same fate awaits them. Jesus is imaging a much different future for humans to conduct themselves and assert leadership. His prayer asserts his prayer asserts his concern for his followers. His words, I quote, but now I am coming to you, he's speaking to God, and I speak these things in the world so that they may have joy made complete within themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world just as I do not belong to the world. 
Sanctify them in your truth. Your word is truth. Those who see themselves as belonging to the world cannot see beyond the definition of how humans gain power and control. It is only as we dare to see beyond making a kingdom here and now that we can begin to see the bigger picture beyond the limitations of this world. Jesus' image of God is one that transcends the limits of what we humans create on this earth. This image will equip him to get through the suffering that is just around the corner for all who defy the ones who live with the illusion that they are in charge. His concern is for his followers to have what they need for the shattering of their hope for a kingdom here on earth and all the losses that that will include. The sanctification Jesus prays for them is the sanctification in the truth that what is is but a prelude to a new beginning. Jesus' imaging of God and himself is within the reality of a creation where the games we play to get and maintain control are no longer needed. This has to do with how we image God. And that led to the sermon title. The kingdom of God image creates a hierarchical system of ranking based on the imaging of king at the top of the pyramid and a hierarchical system of power all the way down. What I believe is a more accurate image for Jesus that he lived out is to get the G out of the kingdom, which leaves us with the word kin. A word that is inclusive and a word that is warm and welcoming. If we are kin, then we are part of the family. And that is how I see our connection with God. The choice we have is how we choose to be in God's kingdom that is grounded in self-giving love. Henry Nouwen writes, many voices ask for our attention. There's a voice that says, prove that you're a good person. Another voice says, be sure to become successful, popular and powerful. Another voice says, nobody cares for you. One of many of the voices. But underneath all these often very noisy voices is a still small voice that says to us what God said to Jesus. You are my beloved. My favor rests on you. This is the voice we most need to hear. But to hear this voice requires special effort to listen, special time apart to get free of enough of the clamor of all the distracting voices that demand our attention, a willingness to pay the price to listen. For me, this takes having, companion, having human companionship, companionship that encourages me to remember how it is God meets me, confronts me, and guides me through what I need to confront to be able to listen and to hear the many ways God has to provide the spiritual assurance that I need to motivate me to be all I can be here and now. A shift in imaging from kingdom to kingdom represents a movement in, in our experience of Jesus, imaging the relationship with God from the hierarchical to the imaging of, that is inclusive and welcoming. James Findlay 
is a clinical psychologist. He's also a deeply spiritual person who writes about his journey with God and helps others to explore their own journey with God. He writes this about his journey. I was raised in a home with a lot of trauma, physical, sexual, emotional. This left me pretty messed up. And after graduating high school, I ran away from home and joined a monastery. I thought if I did that, then God would fix me. But it didn't work out that way. And I ended up running away from there as well. All the stuff I had lived through at home growing up came out in feelings of fear and confusion. Even becoming a monk didn't work. So I left and started a new life as a way to bury the pain and move on. I decided to become a counselor. Maybe that way I would learn what I could, what I could to help me help me. That didn't work either. And eventually I ended up in therapy where I finally was able to begin to address these inner demons. Fortunately, the counseling came in a setting where I was encouraged to pray and to be open to what God might be up to in my life. It was in this painful but liberating process that I came upon what I call the axle moment in which our most intimate experience of who we are in all our pain descends on its axle of pain into confrontation with a love that is able to embrace the pain. In this deep, vulnerable place of exposure that I feared would destroy me, I encountered the loving presence of God welling up and giving me a personal and intimate healing journey. Here I discovered what Jesus referred to as the pearl of great price, which I have come to understand as the deep contact with my inner woundedness that I had convinced myself would destroy me. But in the presence of God, it was carried into an invincible love. What James discovered was that this experience of love in the midst of his brokenness began a transforming journey, dissolving the hurt places until only the love was left. At a retreat I completed many years ago in Saskatoon, I had the opportunity to be with James Finley. And it was James Finley that introduced me to the prayer, be still and know that I am God as a way of, of preparing myself to be. The way to the kingdom of God defined as a kingdom of God has a foundation built on the liberating love of God that meets our need for acceptance and safety so we can shift from a power over model of relating to a power with relationship. Well, I'm weary of the pandemic limitations as I expect many of you are. I'm used to being active and traveling to see family in Saskatchewan and Oklahoma. I haven't been able to see them for over a year and a half. The prospect of the vaccinations has been encouraging, but it is likely there will continue to be restrictions in travel over the course of the summer. Last weekend, I celebrated the arrival at 78 years of age. And this period in my life is proving to be an awakening to the limits of time and mobility. What I have taken for granted is not necessarily something I can accomplish. This gospel lesson confronts me with the futility of a definition of life that does not see it as but one stage 
of our being relationship with God. A few weeks ago, the gospel lesson included Jesus' words about him being the vine and me one of the branches. Well, it sure helped me put me in perspective. Today's gospel assures me of God's faithfulness at every stage of life's journey. It is when I put what I know of my life in the perspective of the bigger picture that I can rest in whatever I must accept as limits. Let love be my guide and give thanks for a hope that connects all of us to a bigger picture. Let us pray. Will God help us to trust our being in your care? Help us to see ourselves as part of a kingdom, part of the family, a member of the family who is cherished and valued and welcomed. As we do that, help us to find courage for our journey and confidence in the one who journeys with us. Amen. Let me be filled with kindness and compassion for the one, the one for whom you loved and gave your son for humanity. Increase my love. Help me to Oh,
Welcome to this time of prayer. I return to that passage in Psalm 4610. Be still and know that I am God. Help us in prayer, O God, to see you not so much as one we summon, but as one who longs to be present to us, as one who understands our humanness and welcomes our openness. Help us to know that God is present. While our sins distract us and undermine our confidence in your grace, what gets in the way is not so much our sin as it is our fear. Our fear that you will judge and cast us aside as hopeless cases. A fear that you will demand what we don't want to give. A fear that our plan for today and tomorrow will be interrupted. A fear that God will take us on a journey where we don't want to go. Help us to be still and know that you are God. Help us in this time together to be still long enough to be receptive to your presence, to hear your voice, to feel your touch, to experience your reality. As we be still, we recognize that there are many challenges we face. We got decisions to make, people to see, tasks to accomplish, enemies to face or to avoid and demands that we don't want to think about. We got aches and pains physically that demand our attention and tempt us to feel abandoned or out of control. We have many things to distract us and challenge our capacity to be still and to be present to you. We got worries about our family, our health, about how we're going to cope with the demands of this next week, of how we're going to react to those situations we don't like to have to face. We got fears every day when we open our newspapers about our safety and the difficulties and challenges our families face in earning a living and in finding some security and confidence for their future. Being still is difficult in a world like ours. Help us, O oh God, to know that you know how difficult it is to just be. That you do not judge us. That you assure us that your love is sufficient to see us through. Help us to relax in your embrace. Help us to be still and know that you are God. Help us to be still. Help us to be. In the midst of whatever stillness we can allow ourselves to experience, help us to enter into it as we share the Lord's Prayer. I invite you to, to read it with me. Creating God, ground of all being, provider of a welcoming kingdom. May your empowering and liberating will be done among all your creation. The sustaining source of our humanity in your assurance of the forgiveness of our sins, motivate us to extend forgiveness to others. Guard us in the midst of temptation and strengthen us when we face evil. For it is from you that we come and it is within your loving embrace that we discover eternal security. Amen. The hymn. Number 660, how firm a foundation.
As you enter a new week of opportunity and challenge, may you have the courage to befriend your eternal longing. May you enjoy the critical and creative companionship of the question, who am I? And may it brighten your longing. May a secret providence guide your thoughts and shelter your feeling. May your mind inhabit your life with the same sureness with which your body belongs to the world. May you, your sense of something absent enlarge your life. May your soul be as free as the ever new waves of the sea. May you succumb to the danger of growth. May you live in the neighborhood of wonder. May you belong to love with the wildness of dance. And may you know that you are ever embraced in the kind circle of God. Amen. May the peace of God be your peace. May the love of God be the love you show.
service of Chalmers United Church, located at 212 Berry Street in beautiful Kingston, Ontario. We are funded entirely by donations from people such as yourself. If you wish to contribute to Chalmers Ministry or would like to find out more about our life and service, please visit our website at chalmersunitedchurch.org. Thank you for listening.